Question six then from paper one of the 2016 Higher Maths. Four marks, functions of functions question. This time on inverse functions. Find the inverse function. We don't often ask that one. It gives you the formula for this function f of x. And it says find the formula for the inverse function. Given that they both exist. So it works both ways round. Well, there's a couple of ways of doing that. Usually you would say, remember, a function would be this. You've got a set of starting numbers, the domain, usually you call a starting number x. You apply some rule to it, that being the function, and you obtain a set of answers, the range, and usually you call them y. The inverse function would be what would take you back to the start again. Given the answer, how could I obtain the number I started with? That would be the inverse function. And of course, for that to happen, each starting number could only go to one answer and conversely each answer could only have come from one starting number. So one way to do this would be to say well if you let y be the answer so if you let y be the answer to that just calling that so x is the number you put and y would start that means that x would be given by the inverse function acting on the answer. don't need to state that at all. I'm just saying that this is one way of approaching it. Saying that, well, if I put in x, the answer I get out is y. So I could say this for the first line. y equals 3x plus 5. Not quite the first mark yet. Start to rearrange that. So 3x, I'm writing the other way around. 3x would be y, take away 5. That would get you the first mark. So x would be y minus the 5 upon 3. That would get you a mark. You can't just leave it like that. Strictly speaking, what this says is you were acting on y. So the inverse function acting on y produces this. If you put your answer into the inverse function and do this to it, take away 5 and divide by 3, you'll get the number you started with. But once you've got to this line, and if you put this down, you would get a mark here. You wouldn't get a mark for leaving like that. But usually what you see at this point is, well, it's just a formula. And those variables could be any letter you choose. And the convention is you always state it with x's. So normally you would say I'll call that x. Just choose x for that letter. Because I'm not stating it with reference to what was what in the original diagram here. I'm just stating what's the formula look like. And the formula looks like this. So I'll put my mark there, but you'd have got it here. But you wouldn't have got it if you just left it there. Now, what it does say here is, for these three marks, if you simply stated this answer with no working at all, you would get three out of three. Now, you can do that just by thinking of what were the operations you did. Well, how did you get from one side to the other? Well, first of all, whatever number I started with, I did multiply by three, and then I did add five, and there it was. So the inverse would be, how can I go back from there? So whatever you want to call that number, so say I just call it x, what would I do to that x? Well, the first thing I would do is undo add 5, so I'll subtract 5. The next thing I'll do is undo times 3, so I'll divide by 3, and there you are. You could have got that just by thinking. Times 3, add 5, going backwards, subtract 5, then divide the whole thing by 3. Now, there is another way of doing it, a bit more sophisticated because you, you don't have to mention y's and x's and then flip between y's and x's, which is just to say they're the inverses of each other. The inverse of f will undo f, and f will undo the inverse of f. They'll both take you back to where you started and back to where you started. If you start with x, and then f operates on it and produces an answer, and you take that answer and the inverse operates on it, you'll go back to where you started, whatever you, however you want to call it. Not only that, it works both ways round. If you used the inverse function on x and then applied f to it, that would also take you back to wherever you started. So you could set it out this way. You could say, right, there's my first line. f acting on the inverse must take you back to x. What does f do to anything it gets hold of? It does three times the thing, so it's three times that inverse function. Plus 5 will take you to x, then just solve that. So 3 times the inverse function will be x take away 5. And that means the inverse function is x take away 5 over 3. 
with no mucking about with X's and Y's and then saying, well, Y is just a dummy variable, I can call it X or whatever. So you could have done it this way instead. If you did it this way, that would have been the first mark for this sophisticated statement. The second mark would have been to show what that function did to it. And then the third mark would just be for jiggling about with the numbers. Now, part B, just for one mark. If some function g acting on 2 produces the answer 7, what would happen if you took the inverse function and operated it on the answer? Well, obviously, it would take you back to where you started. That gets you a mark. And that was a wee gift.